Hello, I'm Melissa Evans, and this is my case study for school law. What we know from the narrative. Ms. Tate is a second year teacher. Dr. Smith, her principal, has received numerous phone calls from upset parents regarding Ms. Tate. Ms. Tate received an anonymous email encouraging her to go to a website for a personal message. The website contained highly suggestive comments about Ms. Tate and critical comments about the rigor of her class. Ms. Tate felt threatened by the page, especially the final comment that read, who wants Ms. Tate to disappear? Ms. Tate phoned her principal right away and he was given access to the email on the Facebook page. The principal asked if she had any issues with a particular student in the previous week. Ms. Tate insisted it was a student she had in class who was especially tech savvy. The principal printed hard copies of the email and Facebook page and said that they would both speak with the student she thinks is responsible when school resumed after the weekend. The principal also stated that if need be, they would get the district technologist to help discover the origin of the email, who it came from. What do we need to know? Before taking a lot of action here, I think it's important we find out who sent the email for multiple reasons. And I went ahead and listed that we also wanna find out who started the Facebook page, who created it, because with the email, we can't assume the intentions behind the email sent were necessarily bad. While the Facebook page is pretty malicious and it's pretty clear what the intent was behind that page, I think with the email, could be one of two things. It could be the person who created the page or someone else who wants her to see it and wants her to feel bad, or it also could have been good intentions behind sending the email as far as someone coming across the page and recognizing it was inappropriate, wanting to bring it to Ms. Tate's attention so that she could have it taken down. I also think it's important that we know what the district's policy is for an in internet violation and or harassment. What is the problem? I think one of the most obvious problems here is that the website's causing Ms. Tate to stay with her parents out of fear for her own safety. Just like we value making sure students feel safe at school, we need to also prioritize our educators feeling safe as well. There is also clearly a problem with her classroom environment and a disconnect between her and her students. And I think that's an issue because if we could have handled that prior to this happening, I think it could have prevented it. Uh, there's also a potential problem that Ms. Tate is so quick to point out one particular student. To me, this indicates there might already be some bias when it comes to dealing with him in her classroom. Plan of action. I think the first step would be to encourage Ms. Tate to contact local law enforcement. If she's truly feel, fearing for her safety. I think this will do two different things. Hopefully, one, it helps her feel safe makes her a little less afraid with that final comment being written on that page. But I think it also shows that you value her feelings. When you say, okay, I really am worried about your safety, I think you should contact law enforcement, law enforcement especially because it happened outside of school hours. I think, it's, I think it's showing her, okay, I'm taking you seriously. And I think that's important when dealing with your faculty. Um, once hard copies have been made of the website, I would report it to have it taken down. Social media sites like Facebook have options to report pages and contact content that are inappropriate for a variety of reasons. I also think you should absolutely contact the district technologist to hopefully discover where and who that email came from. There's not much you can really do until you find out who sent that email and kind of go from there. I found it interesting that in the narrative, it had the principal saying, um, if need be, they would contact the district technologist. And to me, that's kind of a, yeah, you absolutely should, because if you can find out who sent that email, you can kind of start to build a trail and maybe hopefully find out who's responsible. So that's a no brainer to me that absolutely you should do that. I also think it would be really important to meet with Miss Tate before classes start. Uh, with her staying at her parents the night before classes resume, you can tell she's already shaken. So uh, for me, it would be hard putting myself in Miss Tate's position. It would be hard for me to resume classes as normal, especially if I'm not fearful for my safety. And so I think meeting with her prior to classes starting could help maybe regulate and get her back to where she needs to be to teach classes. And I think when you meet with her, it would be really important to emphasize that we're taking this seriously and doing everything we can to get to the bottom of it. But at this point, there's also too little of information to pull out specific kids. In the narrative, he had, the principal mentions pulling out the student that she has suspicions is responsible for it. And I just think at this point, there's too little evidence to start pulling certain students. But what I think you can do is you can talk to all of her classes and ask if anyone who has information about the site if they could come forward in private or give them an anonymous option to share information they have. 
I think that by talking to all of her students, you avoid the trouble of pointing out specific students or zeroing in on specific students when there's really not much evidence aside from Ms. Tate's suspicion. So by talking to all of her classes, you're making sure everyone's aware that you take these things seriously and you're letting everyone know that you're looking for information. Informing parents of the students in these classes of the website and letting them know you spoke with these students, I think is a really, really important piece here. Not only does it keep important stakeholders in the know, it also lets them know that you take these pranks seriously. I also think you need to wait for information either from the district technologists or students and then follow up to confirm the validity, validity of said information. When you open it up for students to give information they have, you have to recognize that not always are students truthful. And so before you act on student given information, I think it would be really important to confirm that that really is what happened. Then I put that you should act according to, to district policies. Several steps on the plan of action are straightforward and don't necessarily require strategies such as reporting the page to Facebook to be taken down or even calling law enforcement. There's not a lot of strategy in implementing those actions. Um, but some of the strategies I will recommend will be first steps that do call for strategies and hypothetical situation of finding out who did it. First, I think it's necessary to be proactive with Ms. Tate and keeping her informed about what's being done to get to the bottom of the issue, but also reiterate that there's not much you can do without knowledge of who created the page. I think it's really important to take the time to keep her in the know, and that'll ensure she let, that will ensure she knows that you're taking the issue seriously and looking out for her best interest. I think talking to all of the classes establishes an innocent until proven guilty protocol that's necessary to maintain fairness when dealing with students. Even if Ms. Tate suspects a particular student, there's not enough evidence to single him out yet. Informing parents of the website and that you spoke with their, with their children is really important for a couple of reasons. Like I mentioned earlier, it keeps your vital stakeholders in the know and it lets them know you take these pranks seriously. I also think it's really important to work with Ms. Tate on implementing strategies to help with high student stress in her classroom that she previously struggled to use. In the narrative, it mentioned that the principal had spoken with her about some different techniques she could use to maybe help reduce stress and um, increase positive interactions with students. But then it mentioned also in the narrative that he knew she wasn't successfully implementing them and it never really stated what he did after that. And I think following up with that is huge. I think that's really, really big because if you can adjust that classroom environment, it's better not just for the students, but it's better for the educator and can prevent things like this from happening. So I really emphasize follow up there. And even if you have to delegate the task of following up to an, to an instructional coach, I still think it's important if you're fielding phone calls from parents after you've talked with an educator, I think that means that there's still an issue that needs to be addressed there. Resolution, in the interest of promoting the academic success and personal well-being of every student, I think it's best to one, not single out students without adequate evidence pointing to said student. The data available in the study lacks sufficient evidence to pull in individual kids. Two, I think we need to talk with all students to make them aware that these issues are taken seriously as will post-secondary schools these students are likely to attend. Based off the demographics mentioned in the study, it said that a lot of the kids in her classroom were competing for valedictorian, salutatorian a lot, and more often than not, kids who are competing for titles like that have some type of post-secondary plans and post-secondary schools won't put up with pranks like that. I also think it's important to implore restorative justice. Here, should the offender come clean or be identified. I'm a huge, huge advocate for restorative justice, and I think that that would be really beneficial in improving the classroom culture in Ms. Tate's room if you employ restorative justice as opposed to just doling out punishments. I think if kids can understand the effect that they had on Ms. Tate, and if I think if Ms. Tate can understand that what she was doing in her classroom maybe caused some stress between those kids, I think that it could help restore a better classroom culture there. I also think it's important to understand the why behind the behavior. If this page was created by a student, there's clearly a reason. Kids who are happy, kids who feel like they're successful in a classroom don't create pages like this. And so I think that one of the ways to be proactive here is to work with Ms. Tate to improve her classroom environment and hopefully improve her teacher-student relationships.
Based on the information given on the demographics of Miss Tate's students and how they frequently called complaining of her, I was thinking about the potential of this Facebook page being created by a parent, not a student. So initially, when you get this and you hear, oh, students are frustrated in her classroom, it obviously had to have been a student. But then when you read a little more into the information given and you recognize how involved parents are with all of the phone calls to the principal talking about they're concerned about their student's grade, I think that there's a possibility here that the page could have been created by a parent, which is one of the reasons on an earlier slide, I talked about keeping the parents in the know and letting them know that you are aware of the website and that you're talking to your students about it. That kind of gives the parents a heads up to that, hey, we take this seriously. We expect our teachers to be treated with respect and this is so not happening. Um, and so I think that letting parents know that you're aware of it and you're taking it seriously kind of gives them a heads up too that that's not okay behavior from any one student or parent. I was also thinking about if Miss Tate could handle teaching her classes on Monday or if it would be wise to ask if she needed a day to reset. I don't think it would be wise to say, hey, you can't come in, but I think giving her that opportunity saying, hey, I recognize that this is a really big deal for you and if you need a break, I totally understand and there's no judgment there. I think that would be really huge in letting her know that you think her feelings are important. I was also thinking about if Miss Tate would be frustrated that I would not pull in the particular student she suspected created the website. With her being so quick to point out that kid and for me feeling like I don't have enough evidence to pull him in yet, I feel like that could maybe cause some tension, but that's why some of the things that I talked about were encouraging her to call law enforcement, offering her a day to stay home. I think those things help confirm, hey, I'm really sorry. I just don't think there's enough evidence here, but I still value how you feel and I'm still recognizing that and I wanna help you. I think that kind of helps negate that tension that could be there for you not following up with a particular student she suspects. I'm feeling frustrated at the lack of follow through on the principal's part when it came to helping Miss Tate deal with her classroom environment. I was really disappointed that it said that he spoke with her and gave her some options and then she never really successfully implemented them and he never really did much. Um, one of the things that I talked about earlier was that he could delegate this task. I know that principals are really busy and there's a lot on their plates, so he could always delegate this to an instructional coach, but I still think it would be important, especially if he had that initial conversation with her, just to follow up and make sure things are working and talk to her about adaptation she thinks could be helpful if the situation isn't improving. I also feel concerned that Ms. Tate was so quick to point a, few, a finger at one particular student um, it makes me question if maybe she treats him differently in her classroom and that could lead to some not great classroom behaviors. Putting myself in Miss Tate's shoes, I would absolutely feel hurt. Even if she has a rigorous high stress classroom, that doesn't mean she doesn't want the best for her students. And so a lot of times I think, especially for students, it's hard to understand that when you have a strict teacher, they think that they're against them. They don't recognize they're on the same side. And so even if Miss Tate has this strict classroom, I would guess that she still has the best interest of her students in mind when she's creating this classroom. And so I can imagine that hurts to know that you're working to prepare these kids for the next level and then to have something like this created by someone you assume was one of your students, I could imagine she would be very hurt. When dealing with behaviors, I always value taking the time to find the why behind the behaviors. We cannot always prevent behaviors, but if we do, but if we do not take the time to identify the why and develop a plan, ideally with the students, then there's a good chance we'll see that behavior again in this particular case study. If we do find out who's responsible and it was a student, I think restorative justice could be huge, not only in rectifying the situation, but in helping establish a better classroom culture for Ms. Tate and her students. I also value ensuring everyone in a situation feels valued, even the offender. When someone feels valued, they are more likely to admit when they have made a mistake and feel more motivated to make amends without being forced to do so. There's potential that this will never be resolved because there's potential we'll never find out who created the site. I could see how not knowing who was behind it would leave Miss Tate feeling like it was unresolved. Not more investigation per se, but I think Ms. Tate could use more support in establishing a classroom environment where students can be successful while Ms. Tate maintains the rigor she values for her courses. I also put on here, no, it's very, very, very important to handle this delicately so Ms. Tate does not feel like she is being blamed for the website being created. This is a really, really hard thing that I feel like could have been avoided had the principal just followed up on these strategies when he knew she was still struggling in the classroom. 
um, but because he did not, and I'm not saying that the page was created because he did not, but it's a possibility that it could have been avoided had he followed up and helped her establish a better classroom culture. And so in, a, in an attempt to do so afterwards, he has to handle it really, really delicately to make sure Miss Tate does not feel like she's being blamed for the creation of the website. The education leader at the building level applied knowledge that promoted success of every student by acting with integrity by being open and honest with Miss Tate about what was being done to address the issue, being open and honest with parents of the students in Miss Tate's classes, and by working to resolve the issue instead of dismissing it because of the initial lack of evidence. This last point reminded me of one of the tort cases that I did in a previous module for this class where the school was actually held liable because they didn't follow up on complaints. And so I think it's really important to follow up on issues like this, whether it's from a student or a teacher. The education leader at the building level applied knowledge that promoted the success of every student by acting with fairness, by not blindly accusing, questioning a student simply based on suspicion with no factual evidence, by talking to all classes so that no student was singled out without adequate evidence, and by not punishing everyone in an attempt to get information out of students initially unwilling to divulge information they know. One of my biggest pet peeves is when coaches or students will punish an entire team or an, an entire classroom in hopes of getting the guilty party to come forward. I think that that creates so much tension between students, between teammates, and I just, that to me is not fair at all. The education leader at the building level applied knowledge that promoted the success of every student by acting in an ethical manner, by not acting without first looking for clear facts and evidence, by accepting some responsibility for not following up with Ms. Tate to help her successfully implement techniques to increase positive interactions with students, and by taking action to resolve the issue. By not pushing this issue to the side, by working hard to find out who is behind it, and by working with Ms. Tate and keeping her in the know, you're letting her know that she's valued. So even if you don't end up finding out who is behind the creation of the Facebook page, hopefully at the end of the issue, your educator understands that you have her back. And that's really, really important for a teacher-principal relationship.